We commenced our tour of Tunisia by first visiting the 3rd century Roman theatre in El Den. Put the stone and load it on the car or take it, put it on the top of the walls when they were used for the foundation or for the building of the, the monument. Right, the way to do it is in the The main theatre stage. visited the cool underground caves where the Vevrin live in this waterless region. Normally this is covered, covered and there is a small piece of wood like that. This is a child's bedroom. The only way the child can reach the bedroom is by a rope ladder. which moves is the one on the top. The top stone turns round, it's turned round by that lady and them grains, when they are put in the middle, they all go between the two stones and that's the way how... The Vedwin family who live in these caves This is the view from the top looking down on the caves. The fish and the hand. The Arab signs for good fortune and good luck. The lunar landscape of Mat Matter.
A synagogue. There has been a Jewish community in this area since the 7th century. This is the Holy Chalice. A typical Arab market. <laughs> A large salt lake in the middle of the desert. hills and all the surroundings are entirely salt. In 1969, we had heavy rain, and several villages like this one have been destroyed. Uh, they have been destroyed, sorry, because the walls 
were built with mud and stones, and the roofs were built with the wood of palm trees. And they couldn't, these houses couldn't resist in front of those heavy rain. These oases are natural oases. The difference between the natural oasis and the artificial oasis is that the artificial cultivated ones are planted the palm trees and those cultivated uh, oasis are in lines like the olive trees whereas in the natural and spontaneous oasis the, the palm trees are out of order. But I do not recommend that for you. Don't recommend to drink it. It comes from the bottom of that mountain. And the temperature of that water is about 24 degrees Celsius. It's not really that fresh. That stream provided the water supply to this town.
an Arabian sunset. visit to Tunisia is complete without a ride on the Red Lizard. The train is called the Red Lizard because it looks like a red lizard travelling through the desert. The train stops at various points en route, the first being this beautiful gorge. The joy of this ride is the magnificent scenic views one experiences.
put the bags made of alpha glass. Gla sorry, alpha glass. Those crushed olives would be put in these bags made of alpha glass, and the alpha glass is that weed that we sow on the way up to Matamata. underground water system. It was fed by natural springs and some of the natural springs were out of the city and the Romans had to build pipes to take that water from the spring to this water system. And it was a completely covered system and pipes would start from this system to go to different parts of the whole city. Inside this water reservoir where the Romans would wash and get feet, they were much more important than that. They were first a, play, a meeting place. The Romans would spend long and long hours in these baths. Intelligent were the Romans. The heating room of these baths is this way, see? It's cold, it keeps the warm or the heat in. And the floor has been built on those pillars and sometimes in some other remains we find the floor built on big stoves and that space is connected with the heating room which is right at the end over there and then heat would go in between those, the, that, between those two floors and it would run up in those pipes in there. On All of these monuments were generally built around the city centre because they were considered as the most important building of a Roman city. Then a Roman city, surrounded by a wall on, on three sides, surrounded by corridors as well, and the fourth side of the forum was the one of the capital. And the way how the Romans built these two, or used to build these two, the forum and the capital, is the same as you see now. The capital must dominate the whole area, or the whole square, and in the corridor, or in the shade, of the corridors that used to run on three sides of the whole forum, the Romans could sit down and talk about everyday life. So these forums were another meeting place with, within Roman cities. As I said, the forum had to be dominated by the capital. And as when we visit the site of Suga, we won't find this, we'll find that the forum has been built of human beings, especially on their mosaics. But by the late Christian era, they went back to represent human beings on their mosaics and they forgot about this tradition that goes back to the early Christian period. And as I said, one of the Christian influences over this art was, this, was to stop to represent beings in general on their mosaics. These little boxes were shops in the trading area of the city. <laughs> the 
These reservoirs provide the water to the holy city of Kel Ur Ruff. visited a mausoleum. This is where they bury dead Muslims. This is the inside of the mosque. The pulpit is where the mullah preaches from the Quran. The prayer mats are where Muslims pray to Allah. The part on the left hand side is reserved for women. This is where the Mullah calls the faithful to prayer. We next visited the remains of the Roman town of Dugar. Our first stop being the anti theatre. Then we will finish our visit by stopping at the brothel and the communion toilets of the city. Now we'll come back to the car parking. So we'll be covering the most important monument of this city, as I said, originally built by the 
and it helped the Roman army when they were fighting against the Carthaginians. And after the defeat of the Carthaginian army and the destruction of Carthage, the city was quickly Romanized because it was granted the charter of a free city and white, simple mosaic. And then the stage opens to the seat steps. And the seat steps of this amphitheater have been built on a hill and that made it cost cheaper for the family which that built this uh, theater. It includes two gates and a third one from the top on the top of uh, the seat steps in there. So as I've been saying that this theater was built during the second century AD and it was built by a rich family. <laughs> Oh, sorry, the, those lines and those carvings on the stones over there, they were meant to help the animals not to sit down when they were pulling their carts. They were not decoration for the road, but they helped those carvings, made the floor harsh, and that would help the animals when they were pulling their carts. As I said, the city of Duke has been built in the middle of this fertile land, and also it's been built on a main road that connected the city of Carthage with Sivisti and those cities were very big cities during Rome of Duca and the beginning of that pathway that crossed the hills to head up to the city of Carthage. Right this way please. And then it was destroyed by the Arabs and occupied by the Arabs till the 12th century AD and starting from 12th century AD the city was abandoned and then few families stood in this site and as I said it was only in 1973 that they have been ordered out of uh, the site. The capital of remember I said that Capitol is the temple of Jupiter, the Roman god of God, and the capital must be higher than the forum. And there has to be there has to be steps to go in the capital. The front wall must be built had to be built on six pillars, generally six pillars, and you can see the six pillars holding the front wall, triangular roof, and on the front wall of this capital is engraved the symbol of Jupiter. We've got the symbol of a huge eagle with a human being breast. You can see the big wing on the left side of that triangle on the top of the wall. Can you see the wing? And can you see that wall symbolizes 24 hours of the day? Can you see the flowers? Right on the top, on the borders of the front wall, there are flowers. Again, you can see the, sim the two symbols. Inscription.
pipes provided the water for the city. These holes in the wall are where the Romans would hang up their horses. They ring the bell, they will come out, you make your choice, then you go in and on the way out, I haven't been in, you come to the cashier. Post shoe four. It includes twelve toilets and a pipe on the floor where there was water and a lava boat washed the hand on the way out of these communal toilets. In private houses the Romans would have their own toilets but these were for the pedestrians and the way out of the city was this one. You can still see, again, you can see the cart tracks on the floor on that pathway that has to Tivisti in the eastern side of Algeria. Our next port of call was to the Roman remains at Cartilage. Our first stop being an early Christian funeral chamber. <laughs> here. All of those remains that you see in front of you down there make up just this part on this plaque. That was the surface floor of all these imperial bars of Carthage. <coughs> right, to go down to these bars, there are, there are steps over there. Down there there are steps and if you pass those steps and turn right, you will be in the heart of those remains. If culture, it was now time just to relax at the seaside.
this relaxation, it was now time to return to Tunis to visit the Bardor Museum with its marvellous Roman mosaics. <coughs> Jupiter. port of call was to the seaside resort of Hammamat. This was for pure relaxation.
after taking photographs from the top of the fort, it was now time to visit the inside of the fort where local music was provided. <laughs> 